going to you know, Congress and the Senate. And what's so extraordinary about that is that Americans should own the banks, right? Um, because they paid for them. Now, if that happens, then they could actually own their own government again. Wouldn't that be revolutionary? No, maybe the missing ingredient here is the media uh, to be asking these critical questions. I mean, who is holding uh, those who are being bailed out and those who are bailing them out to account? Um, there's, there's no question that there's a huge opportunity here, which is being which is being missed by mainstream media. But that's not earth-shaking news to uh, to viewers and listeners of Democracy Now. What's interesting, though, is that we're Workers in, in, in many cases now are giving the media a story. And one of the incredible things about the Republic Windows and Doors story didn't happen in Argentina in the wave of takeovers there. It happened subsequently as films like The Take and others made the rounds and people learned about what was happening there. You get worker-led constructive alternatives, which are so dramatic and, and so different that then they get coverage and then you, and then you have media ha being forced to take notice. Uh, I want to turn now to Chicago, where workers at the Republic Windows and Door Factory occupied their plant in December after the plant's owners gave workers just three days' notice of the plant's closure. This is an excerpt of a documentary produced by the Workers' Union, United Electrical Radio and Machine Workers of America. They gave us like an hour, more or less. They came and said, okay, time, you have your papers, now go. That's when we said, no, we're not leaving. This is where we're staying. So we decided, we, we just said, well, hey, we're going to stay here until, you know, y'all give us some better answers than this. This is a group ready for a fight. We put it to a vote, and workers decided uh, that they will be staying in the plant uh, for the remainder of the weekend. More than 200 of Republic Window and Doors 300 union workers are staging a sit-in of sorts until they get what is legally owed to them. The union says company officials told employees they were closing shop because Bank of America would no longer extend Republic a line of credit. Bank of America wouldn't confirm that due to confidentiality concerns. Workers say the fact that Bank of America received $25 billion in the federal bailout makes this even more unacceptable. I'm going to stay until the end. If they told me I have to leave, well, if they have to arrest me, you're prepared to be arrested. I prepared to be arrested if it's necessary. Translation: We are here and we are not going anywhere. We've been here overnight. We've been here since yesterday and we aren't going anywhere. We are committed to this. Melvin Lacklin is one of dozens of Republic Windows and Doors workers who is staying put in the company's cafeteria until he gets his remaining vacation, health care, and severance pay. You got bailed out. We got sold. These workers, if they have earned these benefits and their pay, then these companies need to follow through on those commitments. Workers all around the nation who are now facing massive layoffs, it's your job, it's your plant. Stay there and fight for them until justice comes and justice will come. What I saw inside was that people were very excited. They came to me and they said, Rosie, Barack Obama said that he's impressed with us. <laughs> and we're so ha happy to, to know that the people on the outside hear us and we have their support. And all that support that we got, it made us stronger. And it made us realize we had to stay. We couldn't give up the fight and we would keep fighting until we won. Bank of America, it struck a chord in me because the first thing that they said was remember, we are an organization that's here to make money. That was the first thing that they said, you are here to make money. Okay, then when you make money, make more money by keeping us open, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you would think, I mean, because we didn't need a whole lot of money. We needed money for day-to-day -day operations. This bad press is coming into place and you're starting to lose money and you stand a chance of now losing billions of dollars as opposed to 1.75 million. Now you want to step up, you know, which, which is a good thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so um, then now they want to help. Now they're saying, well, our only concern is for these workers. Wow. Where was the concern before the 
publicity, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, and it wasn't just the Bank of America here. It was their branches all over. It was amazing. I couldn't have dreamed a better dream. The occupation is over. We have achieved a victory. We say we will not go out until we get up justice, and we have it. Yeah. Excerpts from a video produced by the Workers' Union, United Electrical Radio and Machine Workers of America. Armando Robles is the last person you saw in that video, and he's joining us here in the Firehouse Studio, president of Local um, 1110 of the United Electrical Radio and Machine Workers of America and Chicago maintenance worker at the former Republic Windows and Doors factory. Um, the latest news, and welcome, Armando. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to me being here in United Now, in democracy now. Could you tell us a little bit about what's happened to the factory since? Uh, uh, there were reports about a, a couple of months ago that a new buyer came in and, and is reopening the factory. Yeah, yeah. In December, the, the in the end of December, the I received a call in the union hall from a, a guy from uh, uh, California, uh, and he said it's interesting to buy Republic Windows and Doors facility, and uh, we have an agreement to. Bring him to Chicago. Uh, we show the company, and we we introduce him to the government and uh, and the bank to start dealing to the possible buying. And uh, like uh, a month and a half, they conclude the the buy. We have our we negotiate our own contract for four years, and we go down go forward with this. And how many of the workers have returned to the factory? Uh, right now, our 10 workers, because we don't have an, a lot of sales right now, we expect starting getting sales to rehire the 275 workers. You said you were willing to risk arrest. You would stay in the factory. Why? Well, because it was for to support my family, to going out to find another work. It takes, more, takes time. And it was my last, uh, la my last car, my last play, which I had to do it before uh, going out and resigning. Were you surprised by the enormous support you got from around the country and the enormous attention that the uh, that the sit-in generated throughout the United States? Right now, yes. Before, when we started, we don't we don't believe in. That's gonna be the, that intensity is gonna take this, but uh, right now I like I wake up from. <laughs> it's been a bit of a dream, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. Have you been in touch with the Hart Marx people, the factory that made the suits for Barack Obama and his tuxedo that is uh, uh, being closed by the uh, tarp bailed out Wells Fargo? Uh, yeah, well, we sent a crew of co-workers to to talk with them. And unfortunately, I was working, but uh, I'm in touch of that, and I, I feel great that this happened because it's bad to, to how the people is going out of unemployment, and it's hard for all the workers. There's something going on in Chicago, you guys. <laughs> this, and it's powerful to have two examples in one city, because and it and it's powerful what the Republic Windows and Doors workers uh, did. Now, serious materials workers, I guess, is that what you're going to be called? Yes, that's the, that's yeah. the new company. Maybe they'll have a new name. But the, you know, so many of the worker struggles that we've been seeing around the world in this moment of crisis have been for people to just get their severance pay. To, because all of these factories are closing abruptly. Companies are using the crisis as an excuse to shed jobs and to close facilities. And so, so, so much worker energy has been mobilized just to get the last paycheck. But what happens to those people after that? What the Republic Windows and Doors struggle shows, and what all of these recovered companies in Argentina show, where they're actually worker run, is that the next phase is far more important. How do we get to there, where the jobs are maintained, or even that the, Democrat, the workplaces become democratic in the process of being saved from bankruptcy? Because it's one thing to get one last payout, and spending a week in Detroit, it's devastating how many people um, are fighting the last great fight of their working lives in order to get another three months of what they were owed. What happens after that? So these struggles need to go forward to not just, you know, uh, getting the severance, preserving jobs and creating jobs. 
because worker-run enterprises are so much more efficient without CEO salaries, stupid marketing campaigns, and other executive gambling and derivatives and everything else, that worker-run factories and businesses are actually much more profitable and can afford to employ many more people. And what has happened to the, the rest of the workers? You say about 10 now have, re, have returned to the reopened factory. What about the other 230? How are they faring, or how have they uh, fared in the last few months? Well, they, they got a hope, but in the meantime, it's desperate outside. They try to look work on the, on the outside, and uh, it's kind of uh, worse because they, they, in, they go through the some factories, window factories, including those factories, has some uh, uh, former supervisors from the Republic, and they knew the work 